some of the broad issues that I hope we um, can uh, concentrate on this year. Um, some of you have heard me already talk about um, my interest in making sure that we have a bit more time to focus on workforce uh, development. Um, we did have some really great Shaping Our Future sessions last year, and I would like to focus um, this year on looking at the education continuum, so anything from, uh, you know, pre-K, K through 12, then looking at our community colleges and also partnerships with universities at Shady Grove as we try to hone in on the specific uh, workforce development requirements um, to get us, you know, where we need to be in our economic development strategy. So we'll be working on, on some of those um, particular briefings. Um, obviously, the protection and the um, support and expansion of small businesses is still a real important um, priority um, for all of us, and uh, we do have a bill uh, 6-12 that we hope will be funded this year because it is um, basically to assist those small businesses that will be affected by redevelopment of uh, public um, uh, properties uh, such as, for example, in Wheaton, maybe Long Branch, um, and hopefully uh, that we can continue to uh, promote our Youth and Families Enhancement Initiative that we started last year, which was really to restore some key positions uh, in programs that uh, had had to be cut in the past, but that we know have proven to have real, real important impact on youth and families. Um, so those are some of the, the highlights. Um, but in general, my hope this year is to obviously um, shepherd the council as a body through our different um, challenges. And one of them, of course, will be um, our uh, budget, but um, most specifically, I think a big interest that we have as the session has started in Annapolis is the issue of transportation. Um, and I know you have already seen um, some expressions uh, from this council, uh, the executive. Uh, we did have a transportation summit uh, where we stood uh, side by side with Howard County and um, Prince George's County, Charles County, um, to really drive the point that, uh, at least for Montgomery County, this is the number one priority. Um, we're so, so focused on how we are going to push forward and move the needle on our economic development um, goals. And as people talk about, you know, where are we going to expand the base and where are we going to find revenues, we know that our master plans have been key. We've been very busy. But if we don't have the ability to fund our transportation projects, uh, we're not going to be able to move that forward. So that's going to be uh, where a lot of our energy is going to um, be focused. And, and we hope that, you know, that there will be a solution. I mean, we're open to discussions on gas tax, sales tax, sales tax on gas. We're very open, but we feel that it has to be a state um, solution versus just a local approach. It's going to be really important. We are the economic engine of the uh, state, so I think it makes sense that we do it in that way. Um, here locally also on tomorrow, we will be introducing a resolution um, on, uh, we'll call it the guns resolution, but it really is to uh, urge our state um, officials as well as our federal officials um, to take a look at um, the particular um, issues around gun safety. And uh, there was a very important task force that we're asking uh, our state uh, folks to take a look at. And um, we urge the governor of the General Assembly to review and implement those recommendations. Um, very excited to hear that the uh, governor is putting forth um, particular proposals that are very much in line with, um, with what the resolution is going to, um, to call for. Uh, and of course, this is in light of a lot of our um, residents asking us for um, whatever we can do, even though we, have, we don't have jurisdiction, whatever we can do to enhance and to support uh, changes across the board at the state level and federal level. So this resolution will be introduced tomorrow. I believe it's available in case you guys want it. That would be um, there for you. Um, also on school security issues, as you know, we did uh, send the uh, chair of the uh, committee and myself a letter to the Board of Education asking them to accelerate a lot of their school security measures. And they actually did, acted very, very quickly, which was wonderful. Um, and uh, tomorrow we um, will then be uh, beginning to consider and introduce their uh, request for appropriation, I think it's $364,000 or so, to um, make sure that they begin to further um, the school security measures. Uh, we're very excited about that and we welcome their collaboration. It's been really, really important. Um, last thing on two key things also for the General Assembly. Um, we have asked for uh, the D19 delegation, actually, they have introduced a bill. 18-13, uh, which is to designate the Glenmont area as an enterprise zone. 
really important for that area who has been waiting a very long time for some type of revitalization. Uh, and this will allow us, hopefully, to give them some type of tax incentives, et cetera, begin that process. Uh, and uh, Delegate Kramer, as well as Senator Mano, have been leading that charge. It's been just wonderful. And of course, we continue to ask the state for capital investments uh, in um, education, MCPS, uh, Montgomery College, as they're trying to expand their science um, west uh, renovation, their campus, and Universities of Shady Grove, as they're looking at expansion and uh, they need help with a garage. So we'll be working on that as well. Um, I think that's all in terms of some of the things that we have in our plate right now. We will start officially tomorrow. Uh, and as you probably saw on the agenda, we have, you know, some introductions of some issues. We will start our conversation on the uh, accessory apartments, and, um, and we will keep you posted. Um, my hope is to, as I said, have these briefings uh, regularly. But, of course, I have an open-door policy, and you can call me at any time if anything comes up. Uh, you, of course, know Adam Fogel, who's my chief of staff, and I think Ken Silverman is here as well, who also is my legislative aide. Uh, anything that you need, et cetera, please give me a call. So I'll open it up for questions. Fire away. Yes, uh, some, some of your constituents have raised a question to us, and we wanted to soundboard it over to you. Um, what do you say to those of your constituents who have asked, uh, how do you plan on reaching out to all of your constituents and not just the Latino community? <laughs> um, I, I'm, I'm assuming that that's because of the profile that was uh, in the post yesterday. Um, first of all, I'd like to say that, you know, the fact that I've been elected, um, I was first appointed to the Board of Education, but elected since 2006 um, in uh, areas where we're not majority Latino, I think speak to the notion that I have always done that. Um, as a matter of fact, I think 2014 will be the only time where I will be running in a district where I will have a sizable Latino voter a block, but up until now that has never been the case. And so I think that it, that is something that proves um, that I have been very much, you know, somebody who has represented this county very well, the Board of Education as well as the Council. And I have never heard that uh, 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 concern. Um, there's a few people who keep bringing that up over and over again, but I don't think anything will ever satisfy them. So, um, but I think that the fact that the voters have brought me here um, I think it's, it says it all. Anybody else? How often do you plan to be visiting Annapolis with transportation being the council's number one priority? I believe we're going to be there every Monday afternoon uh, so we can, you know, have uh, the regular meetings with our delegation. Uh, you know, as soon as some uh, bills begin to, to show up and, you know, introduction and uh, as soon as we know the dates for testimony, et cetera, I would definitely <coughs> be going there um, as often as is necessary to really hone in on the, on the message and the priority. Okay. And I'm wondering, have you heard from constituents about gun control? Are you getting letters? Are you getting emails? Is the council hearing from folks here in Montgomery County? Mm -hmm. You know, I think that there has been definitely some interest in finding out how we can be supportive. Obviously, you know, our constituents understand that we don't, it's not in our hands necessarily, but that we can at least, um, you know, send forth a message through our state delegation as well as our federal uh, counterparts. And so there is interest in that respect. Um, but most specifically, I think a lot of what we heard were the concerns, of course, uh, around school safety. And knowing that even though we had been so proactive in putting forth a, uh, I think, very comprehensive uh, school safety uh, program, that because, you know, it's still in, in, in the implementation stage, concerns that perhaps we should accelerate pieces of it. And, um, and that's why I think it was just very laudable that the Board of Education acted so quickly uh, to at least take care of the elementary school issue. Um, so, so we're being proactive, we're continuing to accelerate, et cetera, and we'll continue to do what we can uh, to support our, our governor, uh, especially after um, you know, knowing that he is going to be making some announcements. I think that they're gonna be pretty much aligned. And we usually hear a lot about PEPCO at these briefings. I know the PSC is supposed to be having a public hearing coming up. Have you received any more information? Is there any news on that front? Any news? Um, I think that we're waiting to see what will occur. On the PSC, of course, we have been already on record uh, in opposition of, you know, uh, their decision to request uh, a, a rate increase and the reasons why we put that forth and we don't think it's a, it makes any sense for them to try to recover you know costs before 
uh, you know, uh, so so I think we've been on record. Um, at this point, we're just you know waiting to see what's going to happen in the PSC. We'll have presence there, of course, and we'll continue to lead the way. Um, you know, the county has already been uh, very comfortably, I think, doing that, um, and we'll continue to do so. And as soon as we have news, we'll share them with you. Thank you. I know accessory apartments are going to be discussed at length tomorrow. I'm sure. This has come up in the past, and it's gone so far and unstalled. Are you confident that this is going to move forward? Do you believe our council can reach consensus on this? I really think so. I, I, you know, there's been a lot of work done, uh, and I have to really uh, commend everybody who has been involved in trying to find, you know, some um, middle ground. And, and also, a lot of work has been done to talk to the community about the fact that this is not lessening, um, you know, the requirements. It's, it's really tighten things up and it's really being a lot more specific than we were before. Um, so I do believe that there will be um, a good outcome and I think it also helps us in our policy goal of providing a diversity in housing um, because we have heard also concerns about the aging population and you know um, people who are not able to necessarily then age in place and I, I think this would be uh, one component that will uh, further that goal. So I, I am hopeful and I, I look forward um, to it being productive and, um, you know, in us coming to consensus on it. And do you support it? Yeah. I also know, I apologize if this has already been asked, I know Ike releases his amended CIP tomorrow as well. What's kind of your impression going in? I don't know if you can give us any details of what you know at this point. I don't have tons, tons of details, but I know that, um, you know, we definitely continue to be very mindful of, um, being conservative when it comes to our CIP. Um, as chair of the Government Operations and Fiscal Policy Committee, you know, when we have to go present to rating agencies, et cetera, we're always very mindful of our debt service and how it's become almost another department. Um, so I think that it's, you know, going to continue to be very conservative, but uh, always trying to focus on the priorities that we have already, you know, committed to, et cetera. Um, so it'll be a balance, uh, I'm sure, but I haven't heard all, seen all the details other than to know not to expect anything super grandiose. <laughs> okay. Anything else? Well, thank you very much for taking the time to come.